All right, I want to talk for a minute about how apple trees bear, you know, the different ways that they produce or places that they produce fruit. So this is a variety called July Red. It's a real early apple, uh, not very good for eating, but it's kind of like an early cooking apple. Like most older early apples, the earlier they are especially, they tend to be kind of uh, cooking types. So let's take a look at this tree. It's bearing on the tip of a, a twig here. It's bearing on the tip of this twig. It's bearing on the tip of this twig, that twig, that twig. You know, there's a lot of places where this tree is bearing on the tips of branches. So say when this branch grows out here, it's probably gonna form a fruit bud here, you know, if the tree's gonna bear that year, which it won't always, but if the tree's planning on bearing this following year, this will stop growing, which it's already basically done. Uh, probably won't start growing again unless I give it a bunch of water. It'll probably form a fruit bud here, and this is where the fruit will bear. But you also see that it has fruit along the stems here. You know, one, two here. Uh, there's other places where, yeah, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one. These are actually not really bearing on the tip here, although it looks like it tried right there. So trees are roughly divided in these categories of spur bearing and tip bearing but the reality of that is that things don't fit into this these tidy categories for instance there's a category in the middle called semi semi tip bearing or semi spur bearing or maybe you could divide that into four categories depending on which way the tree leans so there's a good list by the home orchard society which lists trees into three categories i believe uh, being you know spur semi spur and tip it's a great list and super useful and super useful information but just don't get the idea that these categories are all that tidy. So I've gotten apples that were listed as tip bearing and they seem to bear as much or more on spurs as on tips. So it may depend on other factors. The information could just be wrong. So if you have a, a variety which either bears all on tips pretty much or just a lot on tips, obviously you have to approach the tree a little bit different when you're pruning. Uh, there's a general approach to pruning apples and pears that involves, you know, letting the tree grow for the year and it grows long shoots and then winter pruning the dormant shoots and shortening everything pretty much. Uh, now that's a problem with tip bearers because you'll get shoots like this and like some of these smaller ones that are bearing fruit and it'll often will be these ones that are around maybe like 7 to uh, 12 inches, I don't know, that's kind of arbitrary numbers that will be fruit bearing and if you go around and you just shorten all those then well you just cut off a lot of your fruit wood the other factor is that you need to be renewing this all the time i remember seeing a youtube video by stephen hayes uh, who's got some really great apple content and he was talking about what he learned about pruning bramley and he basically said that he kind of lets it grow for a while and do its thing so it's creating new shoots and it's bearing fruit and it grows out and then every once in a while he just comes in with a saw and cuts out bigger sections of it which of course stimulates new growth so if i cut a bunch of this off one year a bunch of shoots are going to grow out and then it can start growing more fruiting wood so you want to approach your pruning differently look for if you don't know what's up, look for short shoots like this that grow out and then terminate in a fat bud right here at the end. I can't really show you much of an example right now, but look for those and err on the side of leaving those because it's tempting to see those as weak growth, right? Because that's another approach you can take is kind of go through the tree and say, oh, let's take out some of this uh, weaker growth in favor of the stronger growth and build that up for fruit wood. Uh, but you could end up easily cutting all of these guys off. All right, so let's look at another variety that tends more toward the, uh, the spur type of bearing. I don't have a 100% positive ID on this, but this is supposed to be Catherine, uh, bred by Albert Etter, really excellent apple. And it is more of a spur bearing type. You can see spur, 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 spur. And you know, this kind of grew out and then eventually grew some fruit on the end here. And I don't know when that happened, but obviously there's a, a strong tendency towards a spur bearing on this tree. So these are long lived and they will tend to just keep uh, producing fruit. Sometimes they'll grow out a little shoot and then bear on the end. They do all kinds of weird stuff. You know, it's not like it's 100% predictable what they're gonna do. But typically most of the fruit on this variety is going to be like this where it bears on these long-lived spurs. And uh, generally though, when you're picking the apples and pruning, you wanna leave these, these spurs and they're very valuable. This is where your fruit's gonna be produced. Here's another variety that has a high tendency towards being spurry. Uh, it's brought lots and lots of fruiting wood all up and down almost every stem. You know, that doesn't mean that's gonna bear fruit every year. It just means that there's the potential 
for it to, uh, more potential for it to bear fruit. But this is to the point where this tree, when it bears, you know, well, it really overbears a lot and it has to be thinned or you're going to be in trouble. Now uh, check these out. These are all intentional cross pollinations, uh, each of which is bearing, you know, one or more fruit. Some of them are bearing a bunch of fruit. So these are, this one's crossed with gold rush, uh, pink parfait, all kinds of cool stuff going on here. So with any luck, I'm going to have these apple seeds for sale this fall. If I can get past all the birds and raccoons and stuff, then uh, we'll have some really cool crosses. And I think that's so much better than just taking a random apple, say, from the grocery store and planting the seeds, you know. The more you can narrow it down, the more you increase your odds. And not just taking two good parents, but taking two parents and saying, what can we do with these two amazing parents? Like, this is Rubiot and it has amazing flavor. Gold Rush uh, is immune to scab disease, and this is one of my most scab-prone varieties. Uh, pink Parfait also has pink flesh, but it's a much higher quality eating apple than Rubiot is. So by crossing it into Rubiot, maybe we can refine Rubiot but keep the red flesh because this has red flesh, but it's a light pink color and this is dark red. So maybe we can meet in between, keep all that excellent red flavor and get more towards an apple like Pink Parfait, which is just outstanding eating quality. The other one I used a lot here is Williams Pride, WP right there. Williams Pride is another disease resistant apple. I believe it's very scab resistant as well. You can see the scab right there on this. And it's also red fleshed, uh, very mildly. Uh, sometimes I've seen specimens that are as pink as my pink parfait apples, but here usually there's just a little red blush through the, the flesh, but it's real obvious. It's not just like almost nothing. And I'm hoping to gang up the disease resistant and just generally excellent, outstanding early apple genes of this variety with the intense red flesh and beautiful, you know, this is a beautiful variety and I just think that this is a real exciting cross right here. As usual, thank you for watching and I hope this was uh, somewhat useful. It's a very cursory, you know, examination of a problem that I only understand so much anyway. This is just from my general observation of how trees bear fruit and as usual, you know, reality doesn't fit the terms and labels and simple concepts that we try to put on this stuff. So just uh, try to observe how each tree bears and start to learn it so that when you go through and you're pruning in the winter time or something like that, or managing the tree over a long period of time, you could start to be thinking a little bit towards uh, what the best management practices are for the growth type of that tree. Slater.